Hi, my name is Pamela Coons, Associate Professor of Medicine in the Division of Oncology at Yale School of Medicine and Yale Cancer Center. I'm excited to announce ASCO's new open access journal, JCO Oncology Advances. As the inaugural editor-in-chief, I hope to support JCO Oncology Advances to become the premier platform to bridge the gap between accessible scientific research and clinical care. Stay tuned for more information, including new article types, at ascopubs.org forward slash JCO Oncology Advances. We look forward to seeing your submissions in spring of 2024. This JCO podcast provides observations and commentary on the JCO article Simplify 1, a phase 3 randomized trial of momelitonib versus ruxolitinib in JAK inhibitor naive patients with myelofibrosis by MESA et al. My name is Vikas Gupta, and I am an associate professor in the Faculty of Medicine at the University of Toronto and director of the Myeloproliferative Neoplasm Program at the Princess Margaret Cancer Center in Toronto, Canada. My oncologic specialty is hematologic oncology. The discovery of the JAK2V617F mutation paved the way for the development of small molecular inhibitors of JAK1-2. This led to the 2011 approval of ruxolitinib, the first-in-class JAK inhibitor for patients with myelofibrosis. Several other JAK inhibitors have entered human clinical trials in patients with myelofibrosis. However, the development of many of these have been discontinued due to safety or efficacy concerns. Ruxolitinib and other JAK inhibitors mainly inhibit dysregulated JAK stat signaling present in the majority of the myelofibrosis patients, irrespective of JAK2 mutation status. The clinical benefits of ruxolitinib are related to reducing the burden of troublesome symptoms of myelofibrosis by reducing splenomegaly and amelioration of constitutional symptoms. The latter is an important off-target beneficial effect resulting from anti-JAK1 mediated reduction of pro-inflammatory and pro-angiogenic cytokines. Anemia and thrombocytopenia are important hematologic toxicities of ruxolitinib requiring dose modifications and frequent monitoring. Anemia is associated with adverse prognosis. As such, addressing the problem of anemia in myelofibrosis is an area of unmet clinical need. Momelitonib is a JAK1-2 inhibitor, which has demonstrated reduction in symptom burden related to myelofibrosis, similar to ruxolitinib, in two previous Phase 1-2 studies. In addition, anemia response was seen in some patients in both studies. The mechanism of anemia improvement in myelofibrosis is not well known in humans. Rodent models of anemia of chronic disease suggest it may be related to reduction in liver hepcidin production. The article that accompanies this podcast provides the result of phase 3 randomized trial of momelitonib versus ruxolitinib in JAK inhibitor naive patients with myelofibrosis. This is the first randomized trial comparing a study drug with ruxolitinib in JAK inhibitor naive patients with myelofibrosis. In this multicenter international study, 432 patients with intermediate or high-risk myelofibrosis were randomized in a one-to-one fashion to receive 200 mg once daily dose of momelitonib or ruxolitinib 20 mg twice daily or as per label. The study had a 24-week double-blinded treatment phase, and after completion of this phase, patients were eligible to receive momelitonib in an open-label phase. The primary endpoint of the study was greater than or equal to 35% reduction in spleen volume at 24 weeks of therapy. Secondary endpoints were rates of symptom response and effects on red blood cell requirements. The primary hypothesis of the study was that momelitonib is non-inferior to ruxolitinib The trial was designed in a way such that if the primary efficacy hypothesis is rejected, then statistical testing will be done for four secondary endpoints in a sequential order. Total symptom score response rate, red blood cell transfusion independence rates, 
red blood cell transfusion dependence and the rates of red cell transfusion. Reduction in spleen volume of 35% or greater was seen in a similar proportion of patients in both treatment arms, 26.5% in the momilitonib arm and 29% in the ruxolitinib arm, establishing the non-inferiority of momilitonib for the pre-specified primary endpoint. However, non-inferiority was not achieved for key secondary endpoint of response rate in total symptom score. 28% of patients treated with momilitonib had 50% or greater reduction in total symptom score compared to 42% with ruxolitinib. As the total symptom score response rate did not meet the non-inferiority test, formal sequential statistical testing was not undertaken for the anemia-related secondary endpoints and only nominal significance was reported for these endpoints. Momilitonib treated patients had greater improvement in all three pre-specified anemia-related secondary endpoints. The proportion of patients who were transfusion-independent was higher, and the proportion of patients who were transfusion-dependent and rates of transfusions were lower in the momilitonib arm. A higher proportion of patients treated with momilitonib developed peripheral neuropathy. Both ruxolitinib and momilitinib are JAK1-2 inhibitors. So what may explain differences in total symptom score response rates? Momilitinib may differ from ruxolitinib in anti-JAK1 inhibition, resulting in different impacts on cytokine reduction. Alternatively, differences may be related to the dosage schedule. Both drugs have a short half-life and it is speculative whether twice daily dosing of momilitinib may better control symptoms. In summary, the results of this trial were mixed. Momilitinib was non inferior to ruxolitinib for spleen response but was less effective in controlling symptoms. Notably, momilitinib and ruxolitinib are differentiated by response on anemia related endpoints. Some toxicities, such as first-dose hypotension and peripheral neuropathy, are more commonly seen with momilitonib. The current study had hoped to simplify the treatment of myelofibrosis by using a once-daily dose schedule and less frequent dose adjustments of momilitonib. Whether the failure of momilitonib to control symptoms as effectively as ruxolitinib is related to insufficient efficacy of momilitonib when used once daily or complex clinical trial design is a matter of subjective interpretation. Momilitonib faces an uncertain future at present as the sponsor has announced the discontinuation of further development of this drug. Given the benefit of momilitonib on anemia endpoints, could this drug have a role in a subset of myelofibrosis patients presenting with anemia as a predominant feature? It is noteworthy that anemia is one of the most important prognostic factors for survival in myelofibrosis. If an investigational agent has the ability to ameliorate anemia in a meaningful way, it can potentially improve survival. Spleen response has become the standard primary endpoint for myelofibrosis trials in the last decade. Perhaps this is time to move away from spleen response and focus on survival as endpoint in myelofibrosis trials. This concludes this JCO podcast. Thank you for listening. For more original research, editorials, and review articles, please visit us online at jco.org. This production is copyrighted to the American Society of Clinical Oncology. Thank you for listening.